You had a very difficult task trying to import Chinese books and periodicals. We felt it very important since China was. 一九五九年 ，Henry Noyes 在芝加哥创办了中国书刊社。这个第一家在美国销售中国书籍的书店背后，是 Noyes 家族六代人一百五十年的中国情缘。早在1879年 n o i s e 家族就在中国先后创办了名校培英中学以及广州第一所女子中学。My dad and I kind of came up with China books, China books, books from China. There it is. What we wanted to do was we wanted to present China as China saw itself in an honest way. My father was born in China. He grew up in Guangzhou, so he spoke Chinese before he spoke English. He developed a great love of China. 就在上世纪五六十年代，中美还没有正式建交 ，Henry 拿着千辛万苦申请到的中美贸易许可证，开启了中国书刊社六十年的传奇。We would start importing books from China in 1959. Having the bookstore out of our house is because we didn't have too much money, and we were using the orange crates as bookshelves. 由于当时特殊的政治环境。中国书刊社的所有收入都必须存在一个冻结账户内，不得支取。而 Henry 因为他美国共产党员的身份以及与中国的业务往来，也经常遭到来自联邦调查局的刁难。They accosted my dad under the viaduct near our home. They said, "You know, we want you to come with us," and he said, "No, I'm not going with you." And all of a sudden. Ten, fifteen people showed up from the neighborhood. One of the guys said, "Oh no, oh no, no, no! He's coming with us. You guys can just leave." We were having trouble with customs and whatnot in Chicago, and my dad thought, "Well, San Francisco is a port of entry, so we really need to be there, and it's a more liberal area." So we did. We moved to San Francisco in 1963. Things were getting farther and farther away from the McCarthy era. Sometimes people walking down the street would say, "Oh, you're importing books from China? Didn't know you could do that in this country." Slowly but surely, we generated a lot of interest, and we're handling subscriptions to Beijing Review, all kinds of different magazines, and we we were even printing Renmin Rebao. We were selling books all over the country to bookstores and libraries and universities and even the Pentagon. China Bookstore not only is the only Chinese bookstore in the United States, but it is the first Chinese bookstore in the United States. 这幅书店上方中国农民大丰收的壁画，也成为了旧金山的一道风景。Our bestseller was the quotations from Chairman Mao Zedong, commonly called the Little Red Book, and we sold over a million copies. It generated a tremendous amount of interest in this country, and we also had it in 27 languages. 一九七九年，中美正式建交，中国书刊社那个冻结的账号终于解冻。I loved my job, you know. I loved the idea of people getting to know about China and the birthplace of my father, and and especially when the art books started coming out and the travelogues started coming out and photographs of China that people were taking. They were making trips to China, coming back and giving talks about it, and and、uh, people were writing books about all kinds of things. And it was a very exciting time. And this was at the border of China when he first went in 1985. 1984. Henry 受邀在人民大会堂发表演讲。他说：“这是他生命中的一个高峰，在美国销售书籍时所遇到的困难，都在一个历史性的时刻换来了丰富的奖赏。” China Books was sold in 2002 to Sino Media. They stayed in the location for maybe a year or two, and then they moved down here. Continuing that heritage is still part of what we do today, even though the company is basically fully owned by Mainland Publishing Group. The heritage still lives on. That's that's what we try to do. We try to tell the story of China. People are discovering it every year. There's new readership, new audience, and we're constantly trying to meet the demands of those readers.